Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Blue Jeans Dreams, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, I see a bunch of butthurt women sending video requests to you more and more. Dude, is this some sort of a trend or something? I want your attention on the issue of why women talk or type so much and never say anything important with their words. They waste my time when I'd rather be playing Warhammer. It's a wall of text every time and sometimes I wish that they could actually cut down what they have to say. Yet sometimes I wish you could keep it all in there so I could see exactly what she's getting at. Anyway, if you can actually fill us in on the wall of text, then by all means, please do so. Cheers. Well, thanks for your donation, Blue Jeans Dreams. The way I would describe this female behavior of putting up a wall of text is by simply calling it verbal diarrhea. She's shitting all over you with her mouth. One of my earlier suspicions was that women would type long-winded messages and all speak in long form, taking forever to get to their point, if there ever was one, because they were taught to communicate like that in high school by writing long essays in English class exams. That was one of my earlier theories, but now I see there's actually a problem with that, and I've been wrong. I'm now leaning towards it being a sort of a way for them to get attention because they seem to type and speak the same way. They say so much without any real meaning. Their words aren't generally supposed to have any meaning, it's about what those words represent. I thought that the words were basically a woman using you as an emotional tampon, and that very likely might be the case, but I think there's even more to it, and that there's actually a very simple answer. Of course, one of the side effects of dumping her negative emotions onto you, like a toilet, is basically that you feel emotionally used up. But I believe that the most important thing a woman gets from dumping emotional diarrhea all over you is not the emotional tampon thing. Sure, making someone feel just as bad as she does might actually make her feel empowered because misery loves company. But I'm starting to think more and more that she's actually trying to turn herself into an attention tampon. You're the emotional tampon, while she's the attention tampon. She wants your gaze on her, and your ears on her as she spews nonsensical things out of her filthy mouth. She's feeding off your attention more than she's actually feeding off the old tired emotional tampon bit. So that's why MGTOW is great, because not only do we refuse to be emotional tampons, but we also don't give women the attention fix, which is what she's really seeking out, especially when she has a terrible day. That's how you starve the cat-loving beast. Many of the guys out there seem to think that starving women only works if they're the top 20% of males. But if you're a beta male orbiter giving her the attention fix, you need to stop that, because then it'll force women to seek attention from another man. At one point in my life, I had three different women that I was talking to and sort of seeing at the same time. It was really hard work keeping my story straight between all of them, but it was even harder listening to all of the things they had to say. I had no problems giving them attention, but it was rather hard work. The bottom line is this. The less men are willing to listen to women's verbal diarrhea, the more women will become emotionally and mentally unstable because they aren't getting enough attention. That's why I think that women are increasingly unhappy in our society because they need a family around them to make them the center of attention. Without that attention, they're basically getting dogs and cats to substitute how they feel, but there are never enough cats around to quench their thirst for attention. Only human attention seems to do it. Think back to when families once upon a time used to sit around at the dinner table and share their day. What do you think that was really for? It was for the wife as she put the kids on the spot and forced them to tell her their day and perform for her like a little monkey. Today families rarely eat meals around the dinner table anymore and that means less attention for women. Now think about animals for a moment as they typically trade attention and affection for a little bit of dried pet food. They don't want to sleep with a woman unless they're actually an unneutered male dog trying to hump her leg, and that's just gross. But you have to look at the cost. You can usually get a cat or a dog at a shelter for pretty much free. Animal food costs you 50 to 100 bucks a month at most, and for that a woman has an animal that'll basically listen to her verbal diarrhea and give her its undivided attention. As more beta males figure out how to starve women of attention, the pet population will continue to grow like a land whale's behind. Today I was walking my dog and I saw this one woman that had three Shih Tzu dogs. She was in her 50s and living alone. I talked to her for a bit and she said the animals are like her children, giving her lots of attention. But getting back to starving women of their attention and taking away their outlets for verbal diarrhea. The greatest thing you can do as a red pill man is to amass a huge pool of wealth and then refuse to share it with women and simply pump and dump them if you have that option. If you don't have that option, and are pretty much true force loneliness except perhaps the obese and ugly women, then the best thing you can do is starve them with attention and purchase some good stocks with the ticker symbols Pets and Woof. And I'm not making up those names, they're actual stock names. If she has half a dozen cats giving her attention, you might as well get paid when she starts buying cat medication for Fifi. With regards to top men using women, I think a large portion of males in our society have figured this out a long time ago and are going around boinking as many women as they can and using as many women as they want. Women are lining up around the block for such guys because it's in their nature to chase the best men. They can't help themselves and that's pretty much it. 
At the same time, the other 80% of men, if they want to have sex, have to masturbate into a sock. Perhaps it's a good idea to start investing in companies that manufacture socks as well as pet food. The best way to really stick it to women is to take away the top 20% of males away by creating things like sex robots and other technologies, which will eventually make being with a real woman like being with a circus freak. The good-looking guys with attitude don't actually want to hear a woman's problems. That's what the orbiters are for. Gay men have also been used as orbiters for verbal diarrhea acting like a tension horse. And I think that even gay men are figuring out what a waste of time it is being around women, because instead of using them for resources, they're using them for attention-seeking. If a gay male doesn't need them around for sex, and they just want to blab about themselves to gain attention, to feed their egos like a narcissistic band-aid for their bad day, then what's the point? Whenever I hear a woman speak about herself, I know that she's trying to get attention to help her cope with her bad day. That's when I look at my non-existent wristwatch and say something like, Look at the time. It looks like it's time for me to go. And instead of accepting that I'm about to leave her, she starts speaking faster trying to gain even more attention because it's all about to dry up. Women want attention from men, but at the same time they don't want to pay for it with what I assume is sex. That's the bottom line here. And if in theory all 80% of undesirable men didn't give them attention, then they would just double down on a barn full of cats. So we can't starve them of attention that way. But eating away into the top 20% of males might actually make a dent in it all, as well as robotics and automation technology causing job losses for women. If they can't survive on their own and get sex and attention from men, then that might just put enough stress on women to become even more mentally unstable. We can't win the game of depriving women of attention because they just substitute human attention with non-human attention. There are billions of house cats out there being held hostage by women so they can talk to them, sing to them, and get as much love from them as possible. As a man, you'll never be able to compete with an animal. Your love as a man is conditional. You love her as long as she's giving you sex, or in many cases, many manginas will stick around, even without the sex, simply for approval. But the animal has no choice. She can abuse it, neglect it, and do horrific things that she wants to it, and then when she opens up that can of whiskers, the cat instantly loves her, starts purring and rubs its body all over her leg, giving her attention. The average woman has to work a lot harder than a $2 can of cat food to keep a man happy. So there's no way that we can basically compete. And a cat will listen all night and snuggle with her after she uses her magic bullet, always listening and keeping eye contact as the verbal diarrhea flows out of her mouth. The domestication of animals is probably one of the greatest advantages for humanity because it provided a reliable source of protein, but at the same time the domestication of cats and dogs provides women with a reliable source of attention. If we outlawed cats and dogs, women would want to ride horses. If we then took their ponies away, then they basically catch rats and mice and make them their pets instead, so they'd always have something to nurture, talk to, and basically get attention from. Short of convincing every creature in the animal kingdom to go its own way, we aren't going to stop women's cheap supply of non-human attention. For us men, sex is scarce, while for women, attention is abundant. That's why women rule our society right now. Because they get what they want, and we don't. We are thirsty, and they are full. That's why women's latest verbal attacks are trying to make pornography classified as a national health crisis in the United States. It's a health crisis, but not for the reasons you think. It's a crisis because it's causing all kinds of mental problems for women because they're being deprived of attention, which to them is like oxygen. Women are telling the truth to a point because they're right, it's actually causing mental illness, but they're not going all the way out and saying that they're the ones suffering from it. Because the last thing a natural-born narcissist or woman, as I like to refer to them, wants you to basically know is that she's addicted to attention. The woman doesn't want the man, she wants his attention. And in the man's case, the man doesn't want the woman, he just wants the body that the mind is attached to. If women are sex objects, then men are surely attention objects. Eventually, if men figure out ways to get sexual gratification without giving up attention to women, we will finally be on equal footing with them. Because as it stands, women increasingly don't have to give sex to get attention. They're more equal or advantaged than us, yet at the same time they've tricked us into thinking that they're the ones being oppressed. So long as we focus on this idea that they're the oppressed ones, we won't see all the advantages that they have over men. That's why I believe that women are spinning stories about the patriarchy and female oppression because they're using these stories to cover up the fact that they have actual advantages over men. It's absolutely genius. You gaslight an entire generation of men into thinking that they're oppressing women even though those men love women and then you keep taking more and more from men and they pretty much agree with that. The reason it works so well for women is because we can't reason with them when it comes to taking care of them. We can't rationalize their actual needs versus their wants. We feel good giving to them, so we basically give them whatever it takes to keep them happy from one moment to the next. They will keep taking and running their mouth off for attention so long as we are there to listen, and if we aren't, then they'll pretty much get animals there to listen instead. Their plan is unconscious and brilliant, but it hinges on one thing. The fact that 80% of men will keep civilization running when they aren't getting their sexual needs met. 
The only way to stop the collapse of civilization is to create these robots I speak of so often. That 80% of men are the linchpin for everything. Screw women and their endless walls of text, we need to solve the problem of sexual and reproductive needs of the 80% of beta males and tie those needs directly into the economy. That's the only way to keep men productive and happy, as well as keep civilization running. MGTOW in the form of the herbivore man has taken root in Japan, and now the youngest millennials are reporting the same behavior here in North America. MGTOW is a cure for individual men, but it's a disaster for populations in general. And I'm hoping that we can make enough people aware of men going galt without access to sexual reproduction. And sexual outlets outside of living women will eventually lead to our doom, so we have to do something before it's too late. Unlike women, I know that men can be both happy and productive. But sometimes I think there's an intentional attempt to destroy culture or civilization. And everyone is against men because of cultural Marxism. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again Blue Jeans Dreams for your donation, and I hope you don't mind I took this talk in a completely different direction. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW Mystery Link. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the liquid verbal diarrhea away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.